we're back with our final segment with Dr. Julio Gonzalez now. Uh, Dr. Gonzalez, we heard about some of the, and we don't have a lot of, this is a complicated subject, we don't have a lot of time to get Absolutely. into a lot of it, but we heard about a lot of the problems that you foresee with the, with the current plan. What would you do to try to help cover more people uh, and also control costs in the system? Well, there's a number of suggestions that I put towards the tail end of the book because I think it's unfair to criticize and not offer solutions. But essentially, my uh, overall f philosophy is that you need to put health care back in the hands of the individual. You need to keep get the patients back in control of their health care. There's a whole bunch of, um, uh, of tax credits and tax breaks that are given to employers uh, who provide uh, care to their employees. Uh, and what we really should be doing is should be concentrating on giving those tax credits and those incentive, incentives to the individual, bearing in mind that when they change jobs, they can take their doctor and their health care coverage with them. Uh, HSAs um, are, are a brilliant idea, a good way of, of uh, empowering the, the patient with control of costs and control of their care. It sounds to me like you're talking about to people like me that have their own business or their own small S corporation where we're the ones that are stuck um, trying to purchase health care on the open market. Right. It's not an employer. We don't have employers. So is, is that kind of what you were talking about is offering some tax incentives to people like me? To people like you and to your employees, more, even more importantly. Yeah. Uh, essentially what I want if, is if we can get the young folks, the people hopefully like you and I are still relatively young. Uh, people who are not in the health consumer portion of their lives where their relative risks are low, if we can get those folks to participate in health, in, their, in the provision of their health care coverage, then I think we have, we're, we'll be in a great situation not only to lower overall costs, but also to lower the premiums to those folks who, uh, who, are, who are trying to afford care who may have some medical problems because through cost averaging, these these premiums should should uh, be diminished dramatically. Doctor, I'm afraid we only have one minute. Let me ask you a big question in a minute. <laughs> uh, what about Sarasota County? How how does our health care system here in this county stack up with the rest of the the state and the United States? I think we. I got to tell you, I've been I've practiced in multiple areas uh, throughout our state, and I am amazed at how well. Uh, the uh, physician colleagues of mine are able to manage very frail, very elderly, very advanced age uh, patients. So I would have to say that we're amongst the best uh, in terms of our abilities to take care of, of very sick pa patients, primarily because of our patient population is so frail. Uh, but we're also very much at risk because the average age of, the, uh, of a physician in Florida is 55 years old. They're highly dependent on Medicare. Uh, for the reimbursements. They have uh, very tough uh, uh, tort rules that are constantly threatening them and threatening their ability to practice. So our ability to bring in physicians from other states or out of medical school is, is severely limited right now. And if we don't do something about it, we could see our health care uh, diminish dramatically. Doctor, how can, how can somebody pick up the book? Well, they can, um, they can go to uh, www aragonpublishers.com and we have a link over there. They can call 941-441-0313 or they can come over to my office so on Nokomis Avenue in, in uh, Venice, Florida. Uh, either way, we have books available and we can make sure that our, our uh, citizens get it. Thanks for coming on the show, Thank Dr. Weir. So we appreciate it. It's very a wonderful pleasure. All right. Now, uh, our Double Weasel of the Week. Well, we have a serious weasel, and then we have a humorous weasel. Our serious weasel is Charles Darnell. Charles Darnell was a guy who had the unlicensed, unregistered, eight-foot pet Burmese python who, in the middle of the night, uh, ended up getting out of its cage, however it was kept, and strangling his girlfriend's two-year-old daughter. Uh, just a tragic story and a lesson to everybody who has these exotic pets uh, that they ought to really think twice about what they're bringing into their home, particularly when they have very small children. Second, 
Uh, Weasel is also an exotic pet related story of a more humorous nature is Emily McCormick. Emily was the woman who this week decided to visit an exotic pet store and stuff a real live pet skunk into her purse and decided to steal the skunk. Apparently uh, her boyfriend later uh, returned the skunk but both of them were still charged with theft of a skunk which is apparently a felony in Florida. Uh, so weasels, skunks, pythons. It's pet day here at uh, Clout 941. Unfortunately, you know, one of them resulted in a tragedy, but uh, hopefully some lessons uh, will be learned from that. And, and just as people who protect uh, their pools from, you know, having young people fall in, we need to protect them now from these exotic pet populations that are ever growing in Florida. See you next week on Clout 941.